This morning I'm going to be talking to you about mountains. And you look around and you say, well, Pastor, that's a bad sermon for today because there's no mountains. Everything is just flat. Well, you know, there is some mountains today. There are mountains in all of our lives. And uh, those mountains come in all different, all different phases, you know, all different facets. Some of those mountains may be finances. Some of them may be careers. Some of them may be marriage struggles. Some of them may be children that have gone wayward. Some of those might be our emotions. It might be fear. It might be anxiety. It might be addictions. It might be a mountain of some things that we're going through since we've lost a mate. Maybe a mountain that we're going through because we are a single parent. But our mountains are pictures of problems that are in our life that we face every single day. And we will face every single day until we get to heaven. And then there's not going to be any more mountains. Amen. But in God's word, uh, also the pictures of a mountain are pictures of the inheritance that he has given to us. And what I mean by inheritance is this, that God has given all of us, his children, a inheritance. And that inheritance is the blessings of God in our life. And what people don't understand sometimes is that God wants to bless our life while we're here on this earth, not just when we get to heaven. I know a lot of us are counting on heaven. You know, it's going to be great and it's going to be wonderful, and it is. And I'm not trying to say that, uh, you know, bring down heaven in any way, shape, or form. But what I'm trying to say is this, that God wants you to have and me to have a little bit of heaven on this earth. He wants us to be blessed, and he wants to give us an inheritance. And what I mean by that is once we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, he becomes our Father. He is our Heavenly Father this morning. In Him, we have everything that we need. We have every single answer to every single problem, to every single situation, to every single issue, mountain in our life. He is the answer. And with Him, there is no defeat. We do not know what it is to be defeated in our life unless we let defeat happen. What I'm saying to you this morning is this. There are many Christians out there that are accepting defeat, absolutely accepting defeat, and they've accepted defeat for years. There have been certain things in certain people's lives that they look at those things and they say those things are just too big to tackle, or they've tried to conquer those things and they haven't been successful, so they've backed away. Folks, let me tell you this. Every single thing that comes our way in life, I could care less what it is, and God could care less what it is. Every single thing that comes our life, in our life, we can have victory over. The problem this morning is not with God. The problem this morning is with us believing in a God that can give us the victory in every single situation we're going through. This morning, I want to talk to you about a message on faith a message that I pray will be a blessing to you. And we're going to be going over into the Old Testament. And we're going to be talking about a fellow that I love to talk about. I really do. And we'll probably have a little mini-series on this this morning. But talking about a fellow named Caleb. And um, God gave him a divine inheritance. There's a few things I know this morning. I know a few things. But two things I really know in my heart this morning as I preach this message is, number one, is that God has given the point right here. He's given us as a church an inheritance. Amen. He's given us an inheritance. You know, the children of Israel years ago, they were given an inheritance too. They were given an inheritance called the promised land. And when the children of Israel left Egypt, they went 40 years to go to the promised land. They marched all the way up to the promised land. They saw a land that was full of milk and honey. It was their inheritance. God had given it to them. It was theirs for the taking. It was there for the believing in God. But they stopped and they sent out 12 spies to look at the land, a kind of a reconnaissance party, if you will. They went into the promised land, they looked around a little bit outside of it, and they saw all kinds of giants that were there. 
They saw all kinds of obstacles and things that were there. And they came back, the 12 spies. And 10 of those spies said, there is no way in the world that we can go and we can conquer this land because all these difficulties are out there. What I'm trying to say to you is this. All they saw was a negative. They didn't see any positive. But there were two spies that came back, Joshua and Caleb, and they saw the giants, they saw the difficulties, the situations, but they said to themselves, you know what? These situations and difficulties are nothing compared to the almighty power that we have in God. God hasn't brought us all this way and done all these miracles, splitting the Red Sea, giving us manna every day, doing all the things he's done, bringing water out of a rock. He hasn't done all these things to lead us up to this point to let us down now. And I will say the same thing to us today. That God has not brought you, he has not brought this church to a point today that he is going to let you and I and this church down. God is still God. I don't care what this world says today. They may put down God. They may say there isn't a God. They may say that God is on vacation. I don't care what they say. I and you, if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we have an awesome, all-powerful God. And he can do anything that he wants to do. I know that God has an inheritance for the point. Twelve years ago, when I got ready to come here to this church, I saw some giants in the land. I saw some giants. I saw some giants that were saying in this church, it's all about me. Everything evolves around me. My wishes, my wants, everything evolves around me. There were other giants who were walking around, and they were self-righteous. All they, thought, all they saw was how wonderful and how great they were. They had a pharisaical spirit, and they looked down on people that weren't supposedly as perfect as they were. And they had a mentality that says, you know, I am always in charge around here. And they said that they were Christians, and they said they were following God, but it was all about them. I saw giants in business meetings that used to take hours and hours to complete here in this church, and some of them went into 11 or 12 o'clock at night, bickering back and forth, saying, no, it's not going to be this way, it's going to be that way. But except for a few wonderful people, and we still have some of those people in our church today, this place was dead. It was dead as a doornail. I mean, I've been in funeral chapels that had more excitement than this church. <laughs> there wasn't any excitement. There wasn't any course. It was just like a church out in the middle of the ocean, just drifting. Twelve years ago, that all changed. With God's Spirit, myself and a few great people in this church walking with God, we inherited the inheritance that God wanted for this church. I saw the giants. Others that were here saw the giants. But you know what? We believed that God was still God. And we believed that we could, through God's power, Turn this place around and get the course of this ship back where it needed to be. And you know what happened? When we started to do that, some of the so-called giants that were here in this church, they left. We had what I've always said, a backdoor revival. They left. And I'm glad they left. And I hope they don't come back. Jack. Amen. Amen. We don't need folks like that in this church. Let them go on somewhere and call somebody else a problem. When they left, there was a new spirit that came into this place. 
There was a new vision that came into this place. There was a new mentality that came into this place. And you know what? God is still blessing big time. Why? Because we saw the giants, but you know what? We said, you know what? We are going to go back and we are going to re-inherit what God gave us. We're not going to let go. We're not going to let Satan win. No, this church at 1430 Bel Air Road, we are going to prosper and win people for the glory of God. Amen. And that's what we've done. And there's another part of the inheritance that God's recently given us. And that is our new Family Life Center that's going to be back here on the back 40. This is our mountain, folks, that God has given to us as a church. No mountain is without challenges. But I will tell you something. God has assembled an army of people here in this church like no other. We have got a love in this church like no other church around this place. We have got some of the greatest people on the planet in this church. If you can't get along with people in this church, something is wrong with you. We have got a spirit around here. We've got a great staff here. We've got great harmony here. And if anybody that wants to come into this church that wants to cause trouble, I don't even have to say a word most of the time. You kick their rear ends down the road. Why? Because we don't want nobody messing with what we got right here. Amen. We got some good stuff going. We got a church going that you thought was dead, that no other ch- people come in here sometimes and say, I can't believe this church is like this. What kind of issues you got? I ain't got no issues. We got a few folks we got to put a little watch on once in a while. (laughs) But other than that, man, we got things going. And God has put this church together for such a time as this. You could be anywhere today. I could be pastoring any church today. But you know what? God has me here. God has you here for a reason. And we are here at the last part of history as we know it, to make a difference in this community. Folks, listen, God's getting ready to come back. And we've been chosen to be here at this time in history. You weren't born any other time. You were born to be right here, right now. And so was I. And it's not by accident. We are right here, right now, to do something here at this place that is so unbelievable and so fantastic I know that no mountains not without challenges no mountain is not without critics I know there's people around that say that that thing that building's not going to ever get built I know that I'm not stupid oh you sit here and rah rah but you ain't when you talk on your own there might be a few people that say that a few naysayers and you know something if everybody didn't if we didn't have any naysayers we wouldn't think that we were Following God's plan. But I've got news for you. We're not going to turn back on our inheritance. We're not going to listen to the people that say it can't be done. We're not going to listen to the people that said, well, God's, God can't do that. No, I ain't going to listen to any of that stuff. We're not going to listen to the negative. You know why? We're going to walk in faith around here. God's always blessed this church in faith. We don't have a million dollars in the bank. We spend everything we get. You know why? We ain't going to leave nothing for the devil. We spend everything we get. We're not worried about it. My goodness. Folks, every need we've ever had in this church, God's blessed. He's met every single need. We don't need nothing. And if we do need something, God will take care of it. That's just the way we operate. We operate in faith. And we fully believe in an awesome God to break down every single barrier that is between us and putting up that building back there. I don't know what kind of barriers are coming, but God knows. And you know what? He's going to give us the the wisdom we need. And he's going to give us every single dollar we need. And you know what? I've encouraged y'all as folks in this church to already thank God and praise God for that building out there. When y'all roll around that corner, I want you to say, Lord, you know what? That looks fantastic. (laughs) It looks so good. My goodness, you know what? Thank you for all these cars out here. Thank you for all those young people 
walking into that building. All those parents walking in the building. You know what? That's the best basketball game I think I've ever seen. Thank you, Lord, for those wonderful bleachers. That scoreboard looks nice. Thank you for that wonderful, this is my most important part. Thank you for the wonderful snack bar we got out there. We'll have a few healthy snacks, but not too many. Amen. We know a few folks still like that stuff. But as for me in this house, we're going to have some Krispy Kremes once in a while. Amen. Wouldn't be a godly church if we didn't have Krispy Kremes. You say, Pastor, what are you saying? Have you gone delusional? All I see is Connexes back there. All I see is a dumpster. I, you look, look. What is faith? Faith is seeing something that ain't there. Faith is praising God for something that we don't see. Because we know in our heart that if God's given it to us, it's already there. That's how it is. So let's inherit what God has us to inherit. Amen. Now, I know that. I also know this. Just as I know that God has given the point a divine inheritance, I know that he's also given you one. He has given you blessings. He's given you victories. And you know what? You have Blessings and victories that have your name inscribed on them. You have a mountain this morning that may look un unbelievable to you, that may look insurmountable to you. I don't know where your issues are. I don't know what you're going through. You can put any issue you want to on that mountain. But I will say to you this. Whatever is there that is your mountain, it doesn't make any difference what it is. God has given you that mountain. Amen. And the only problem that you have and that I have sometimes is believing that we can conquer the giants and the difficulties that are on that mountain and we can claim that mountain. Amen. You say, Pastor, I've never been able to beat this addiction in my life. Pastor, I've never been able to have a, a marriage that is harmonious. Pastor, I've never been able to get my kids going in the right direction. Pastor, I've never been able to have a, a career that can go this way. Pastor, I've never been able to conquer fear. I've never been able to conquer anxiety. I've never been able to handle my finances. Let me say this to you folks. Those are all mountains. God knows those mountains. He knows you. He's the one that built you. He has given you and me everything we need to conquer every single mountain in our life. But we've got to do it through faith. You need to quit saying that I can't do that. I can't is not a part of the Christian vocabulary. There's no such thing as I can't. The Bible says I can. Did you hear me? The Bible says I can. The Bible doesn't say I can't. Quit sitting there and saying, I can't. I can't has defined who you are. You're an I can't person. You know why you can't do it? Because you're an I can't. Amen. I don't have what it takes. Who says that? Who says you don't? That person over here that always talks negative in your life? Those folks in your family that they're jealous of you and all they want to do is poke negative things at you? That person over here that says you can never do that? Listen, if God's for you, who could be against you? I don't know what God you serve this morning. But I serve a God that can do anything that he wants to do. I have a God this morning that can take loaves and fishes and feed over 5,000 people. I have a God this morning that can split the Red Sea. I have a God this morning that made all the planets. I have a God this morning that made the sun, darkness, Light. I have a God that has done so many miraculous things in my life that you know what? I know that God can handle everything that happens in my life. And so do you. You think about your life. Come on, folks. I want you to get a little excited this morning. Some of y'all look like you've been sucking on a dill pickle for a month. You listen. God's done some great things in your life. And you're just sitting here this morning. Acting like you're shut down for some reason. 
The devil's got something going on in your life. He's shown you some kind of mountain and he's preached in your mind to him so much that you don't think you can do it. You and God are a majority in every single situation. There ain't no mountain too big for you and I to climb. Amen. There's no mountain. And we're standing back there. And those mountains have got us in chains. We don't feel we can move. We don't feel these, these things will, will happen in our life. Listen, the Bible is full of miracles. And if God did nothing more in your life than to save you from a lost eternity in hell, folks, listen, that's the greatest miracle he's ever done in your life and mine. Are you trying to tell me this morning that a God that saved my soul, saved my soul, and puts up with me every day and forgives me and loves me with an unconditional love. Are you trying to tell me that that same God can't handle what comes in my life? Come on! Y'all getting me this morning? I'm just a little riled. I better start the message. Point one. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Our God is higher than any other. Look at Joshua chapter 14, verses 7 through 12. Y'all hang on, this is a little long scripture, but you'll like it. You'll remember what God said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me back at Canish Barnea. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of God, sent me to Canish Barnea to spy out the land. This is Caleb talking. And I brought back an honest and accurate report. My companions who went with me discouraged the people, but I stuck to my guns. I like how this says that. Totally with God, my God. That was the day that Moses solemnly promised The land on which your feet have walked will be your inheritance. You and your children's forever. Yes, you have lived totally for God. Now look at me. God has kept me alive and as he has promised, it is now 45 years since God spoke the word to Moses. Years in which Israel wandered in the wilderness. And here I am today. 85 years old. As strong as I was in the day Moses sent me out, I am as strong as ever in the battle, whether coming or going. Listen, so give me this hill or give me that mountain that God promised me. You yourself heard the report. That the Achim that was there with their great fortress cities, if God goes with me, I will drive them out just as God said. What we're looking here at is Caleb was with the crowd that backed away from the promised land 40 years prior. Because of their disobedience, The Lord had them wander in the wilderness for another 40 years. None of them went into the promised land, and all of them died. And none of them went into the promised land except for two people that believed. And that was Joshua and Caleb. And here Caleb is. Forty-some years later, he says, you know, I remember that mountain right there. I was staring at it 40-some years ago. And you know what? That mountain was given to me by God. And you know what? That mountain is still mine. And you know what? There's still giants in that land. But you know what? If God is with me, he's going to be with me. And that mountain is mine. And I'm not going to let anything keep me from it. Caleb was somebody that believed in God wholeheartedly. He recognized the secret to victory with his total dependence upon God. He said, if God goes with me, I will drive them out, just as God said. Folks, that means that he was completely agreeable in faith with God, no matter what happened in his life. Wow, 
What a game changer that would be in our life, wouldn't it? It doesn't matter what comes our way. It doesn't matter how insurmountable it is. We have a faith that is so strong in God, so rooted in God that says, bring it on. No big deal. Me and God have got this. Amen. We've got it. It's done. God give us a bunch of folks like that in this church. I'll tell you what, folks. This place will blow apart. Amen. It'll blow apart. You give moms and dads that kind of confidence in their, with their marriage and their kids and says, no matter what comes into my house, no matter what changes in this world, no matter what the school is teaching, that woke junk, no matter what movies the kids are watching, some of that mess that they shouldn't be watching, some of them stupid halftime shows on the Super Bowl where some woman comes out half closed jumping around like an idiot. Or the Grammy Awards when they have a thing where Lucifer comes out and people start bowing down to Lucifer. Let me tell you something, folks. This world's going to hell. But we don't have to go with it. Amen. Open up your mouth. Let it fly. Let it fly. That other group out there, they let it fly. Why can't you let it fly? Well, pastor, pastor, I'm just a silent witness. You better quit being silent. Because the other crowd ain't silent. You better start standing up for your kids. Don't accept things in your household that are Trojan horses. They come into your household and they start affecting your marriage and start affecting your kids. Mom and dad, stand up for Jesus in your house. And let those kids know that Sunday morning is a place that they're going to church. Let those kids know that when we have something here at church, they're a part of it. And don't just drop your kids off. You come in here and you show your kids through your example how precious Jesus is to your soul. Do not let Satan take run and have a root in your house. Yeah. Woo! Man. Yeah. Caleb was not going to be moved. This was God's plan for his life. This was it. This is what he's been waiting for. Do you think he was going to back down? No. He wasn't going to back down. His feet were planted. They're planted. You know where they were planted? They were planted in strong faith in his God. Let me ask you a question this morning. How are your feet planted today? How are your feet planted? Some of our feet are not very steady. Because when things come our way, we're blown away here and there, here and there, here and there. No, folks, today more than any other day in the history of this nation, the history of this world, we need to have our feet planted. You know, you need to predetermine this morning what you believe in. You need to know what your principles are. Do you know what your principles are? You need to understand how you're going to raise your family, how you're going to conduct your personal life, what you're going to do, what you're not going to do. You have got to have your principles nailed down, and those principles need to be the principles of the Word of God, and you need to be nailed down because this whole world's tried to budge you. Amen? There are a lot of pastors or people that think they're pastors that should have no business being in the pulpit. Because all they do is just, they're just talking about things in, in, in their messages today that have nothing to do with the Word of God. They've watered down the Word of God so much because they don't want to be offensive. All they do is have a bunch of smoke. They have a bunch of lights. They have some pastor comes out that thinks he can do the disco ball. And you know what? All they do is just talk about all the good and wonderful things. Listen, I like to talk about good and wonderful things too. Sure I do. I talk about donuts. <laughs> I talk about ice cream. I talk about all those good things. But I love you too much not to give you the truth. Amen. These guys out there are selling snake oil today. They're selling snake oil. They're not doing anything, and half of them aren't even going to heaven. I believe that with all my heart. I do. Because how can somebody that knows Jesus as a pastor, how can they turn coat and not do what they're supposed to do? Amen. Amen. I don't know of any other way to preach. I got to preach the truth. I got to preach the truth in love. And folks, listen, I believe with all my heart that in the days that we're living in, people want the truth. They don't want, they don't want fake news. 
They want the real news. So when you come here, you get the real news. We don't drift away from that. My feet are planted as a pastor. I'm not changing. You don't like it? Go somewhere else. I'm not changing. You don't like the way this church is? Go somewhere else. We're, we're, we're planted right here. And folks, you better be planted because this old world's trying to move you. This old world's trying to move you. Some lady said something to me the other day. I forget what I said. She says, you're not very politically correct. I forget what it was. I wish I could remember. And I looked at her and I said, I don't care. And she looked at me and I looked at her. And that was the end of that conversation. Listen, claiming mountains is not easy. It's not easy. Let me put in a perspective that we can all understand. Keeping your body in shape, that's not easy. You know, you look at folks that have their bodies in shape, and you say, well, that just happened overnight. No, it didn't. That happened through a lot of diligence. Amen? Amen. You look at somebody that has their marriage working, and you say, well, what's the secret? I'll tell you what it is. It's a good Lord, and it's standing strong in faith in the Bible principles in their marriage and in their home. That's what the secret is. You know how that, how that happens? It happens through diligence. It doesn't happen overnight. It happens with constant diligence and, repu- and uh, repetition over and over and over. Children walking with God, does that automatically happen? No. It happens when parents instill that into their kids. And folks, let me say something to you. You can instill things into your kids sometimes and your still, kids still go wayward. And necessarily that doesn't mean that you failed. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Some of us have wayward kids. Some of us need to keep praying for those wayward kids, and we need to reject the guilt that Satan's trying to give us because we did the best we could under God. We had our feet planted. We taught them the principles, and we need to pray just like the prodigal son. One day, they're going to get so sick of their lifestyle that they will come back home. Climbing mountains aren't easy. You have a death of a spouse. Do you think that's easy to rebound from? We got some folks here in our church that have had that. You know what? I'm so proud of them. Because you know what? Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's difficult. But you know what? They're still doing things that God wants them to do. They're still claiming their mountains. Amen. They got a hold of God. Thinking positive and keeping fear out of our life. We got some folks in here that, you know what? You have every right humanly thinking to be fearful over things, but you know what? You're not. Because you realize that everything that came your way comes through the power of God. It's funneled through God before it gets to you, so you're not worried about nothing. You're not fearful about nothing because you know you got God with you. And we got some people here that climbing mountains has not been easy for you because you've had to conquer some bad habits. You've had to conquer some addictions. And you know, a lot of people told you that those, those mountains were not capable of being climbed. A lot of people said, you'll never conquer that addiction. You'll never conquer that bad habit. But you could stand up this morning, you could shout to the heavens, and you could say, let me tell you something. I conquered that through the power of a living God. Don't you tell me that God's dead. I'm a living example that God is alive. We got a lot of those examples around here. You got to sport a not going to give up spirit. Vince Lombardi said this one time, I've got this in my office, said the difference between a successful person and others is not a lack of strength, not a lack of knowledge, but a lack of will. I believe that with all my heart. If you're stuck this morning, you're stuck because you want to be stuck. If you're down depressed this morning, you're there because you want to be down and depressed. We are a product of our choices. And if we're believing the mountain in our life is too big, the mountain's always going to be too big. It's not going to get any smaller. In fact, Satan will make it bigger every single day. He will. He loves to make mountains big. No, you need to understand. You've got to get up, and you've got to make it happen. Amen. You've got to make it happen. This world's going to knock you down over and over and over again. But listen, you have a choice. You're either going to stay down or you're going to get up and fight. 
You're either going to believe God for the mountain and say, God, like Caleb, give me that mountain, it's mine. Or you're going to sit there underneath it and you're going to back away. Folks, listen. Israel backed away and they wandered for 40 years. Many of us have backed away from our mountains and we're wandering today too. You're wandering. You've got the same mountains today that you had five years ago. You got the same mountain today that you had last year. Remember when you said, hey, I'm going to conquer that in my life. I'm going to conquer this in my life. And you're still there. You know why? Because you are trying to conquer the mountain. You need to get a hold of God's power and spirit. And you need to get up and you got to make it happen. You say, God, I believe that is mine. You want me to conquer this. You want me to have victory in my life over this. Now look, devil, I want you to understand something. That issue in my life, that challenge in my life, that mountain in my life is going down. Did you hear me? It's going down in the name of Jesus. Ten people in here are clapping. The rest of y'all are just still looking at me. Trying to let everybody know that you don't have any issues. Oh, you got issues. One of them is you didn't say amen. I'm trying to pump you up this morning. I'm trying my best to encourage you. Some of y'all are waterlogged. I wish I had a mirror in back of me to see that y'all could see what you look like. I've seen folks at funeral homes sometimes that smile. Mm. Lord Jesus, help them. You need to understand what Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 says. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. That means that there's nothing that's going to come into your life that you cannot defeat through the power of God. Amen. Don't sit around here and say, I can't. Don't sit around here and say, well, I'm just not made that way. <laughs> don't sit around here and say, well, I ain't got the talent for that. I don't have the ability for that. That's a bunch of hogwash. Amen. God didn't make no junk. Amen. Are you trying to say that an almighty God didn't give you what it takes to have victory in your life? Is that what you're trying to say? Are you trying to say that when he was making you that he got off course a little bit and he started working on somebody else over here and left you alone and somehow your wires got crossed up? You are who you are because God made you that way. God made you that way. But when God put you together and when you came to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, when he did that, he came into your life and says, look, I have come to give you an inheritance. And that inheritance is joy and blessings in this life. Hey, some of y'all just think you're living. You ain't living. You're on life support. Look at you. You ever looked in the mirror at yourself? Some of y'all look dead before you even walk out of the house. My goodness. I watched through my window this morning. Some of y'all coming up here. I thought to myself, I don't know what they're coming to. I don't know if they're coming to church or I don't know if they're coming to a wake. Seriously. Never in my life. I thought to myself, it's a good thing we're not filming a promo about coming to church today or an ad because if folks saw y'all, they'd never come to this church. Amen. You know, God just don't get it. He says, you know, I've given you everything in your life to be happy, to be joyful. And here you are sitting there like a bump on a lump. All things are possible to them that believe. Look at this scripture. I like this one. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Jesus said this. What do you mean if I can? <laughs> Anything is possible if a person believes. 
That's what we say to God. We say, can you do that? Jesus, can you really do that? And Jesus is sitting there saying, what did you say? What did you say? Are you asking me, the almighty God of this world, if I can handle that in your life? Is that what you're asking me? Come here, angels. Clean out my ear. And that's what you're saying. Come on. And if you ain't saying it verbally, you're saying it through your actions. You are defeated this morning. All that you have left coming to you is for Jesus to take you home. You're sitting. You're not standing on the promises. You're sitting on the premises. The biggest excitement has been in your life is somebody beeping their horn at you last week. There are churches that are dead today. You know why they're dead? They're dead because they want to be dead. There are Christians that are dead today. You know why they're dead? Because they want to be dead. Folks, listen, Pastor. Listen. God wants you to be alive. God wants you to conquer the mountains and the difficulties and things in your life. To be like Caleb, 85 years old. 85 years old. Some seniors say, well, my best days are behind me. No, tell Caleb that. 85 years old, he said, you know what? That mountain's still mine. Get out of the way. Here I come. And that mountain was his because he claimed it. It doesn't make any difference how old you are. It doesn't make any difference how much schooling you've got. Oh, I haven't gone to college. So what? Well, I can't do this. Oh, yeah. So what? You're who God made you. Amen? God didn't create no junk. He gave you everything that it takes to do what he's asked you to do. Look at that scripture for a second. Anything is possible, and here's a big word, if a person believes. You know why we can't conquer things? Because we ain't believing. We're not believing. We'll sit here in church all day long. Right, right, pastor, preach it. By golly, I'm going to claim that mountain. And tomorrow, you're going to be sitting down, looking at that mountain, saying, I can't do that. That's too big for me. I'm just a little person. I ain't been to school. I ain't got all the pro- I ain't got all the talents that somebody else has. Doesn't have any different. Doesn't have anything to do with that at all. You know what God's looking for this morning? Something that all of you have: a heart and faith. If you've got a heart and faith, that's all that He's looking for. That's it. That's it. That's all he's looking for. He's not looking for talents. He's not looking for abilities. He's just looking for a bunch of people that will say in their heart, I know you're God, and hey, I have faith that you can do it. That's all he's looking for. That's all he's looking for. That's all he's looking for in our church. Have a bunch of people that will tackle something that people don't think is going to happen. All it takes is heart. And all it takes is faith. Amen? Amen. I said that to a staff member one time. They said, well, you know, I don't have this, and I don't have this, and I don't have this, and I don't have this. I said, well, let me ask you something. I said, do you have a heart? And they looked at me like, I said, do you have a heart that believes that with God's power, you can get the job done? Yes. All right. Get out there and get it done. Because that's all God's looking for. Amen. He's looking for heart. And he's looking for faith. Says, I know who I have believed in and I am persuaded. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 12. That is why I'm suffering here in prison. But I am not ashamed of it. For I know the one whom I trust. I know where I'm sitting here today, Pastor. I know where I am today. I know what I'm going through today. But you know what else, Pastor? You know what else? I know the one whom I trust. Woo! Man, that's good stuff. 
Not only do I know, but it says, I am sure. Yes, sir. It's called faith. Yes. That he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until the day of his return. Amen. Folks, let me say this to you. He knows where you are today. But regardless of where you are today, regardless of your broken heart, regardless of your depression, regardless of where you're at today, regardless of what mountain you're at, you look, you say the same words here that Paul said. He says, you know what? I know where I am. I am in prison. I'm fighting hell by the inch. But you know something else I know? I know, I know who I trust. Do you trust God this morning? Do you really trust God this morning? To handle the things in your life. Listen. He is not only your Lord and Savior if you know him as Savior. He is your Heavenly Father. And he loves you and me with an everlasting love. And all he's saying this morning is this. Listen. I don't get it. You're going through a bunch of junk. Why don't you just trust me? Why don't you just give your junk over to me? Give it to me. Let me handle it. Get it off your plate. We all have people that we go to sometimes for wisdom. I got people I go to for wisdom. Not too many anymore because not many people are smart. (laughs) Because I want godly wisdom. But there's people that I go and I dump on. I do. I unload my dump truck. I lay all my problems down, difficulties down. And I ask them for wisdom. But the one I ask more than not for wisdom is my Heavenly Father. Here's something I found out a long time ago. And I'm not trying to say to you that I'm some supernatural Christian because I'm not. But there was something that I had a hard time doing. I'm a very, I'm a very, uh, I don't know how to put this. I'm a person that holds things sometimes and believes sometimes that I can handle things. Everything sometimes. Satan will trick me to telling me that I'm so wonderful and I'm so great and I'm so talented and I've been doing this for 45 years and I can handle all these things. But you know what? It's a trick. Because as he loads my dump truck, it gets heavier and heavier and heavier. And it becomes more of a challenge for me, and it gets me down. It gets me depressed. It takes my fire out. It takes my steam out. And I get very, very down. Here's what I've learned. Whatever comes my way, I've got to trust him. I don't care what it is. I've got to immediately understand and know that he's allowed this into my life for a reason. I've got to trust him. I have got to back up my dump truck. Listen, I've got to back it up every moment of every day. I have to empty my garbage truck, dump truck, sometimes five, ten times a day. I have to empty it. You know where I empty it? I empty it right here. At the foot of the cross. I come up to this place. I said, Lord, I, Lord, hey, this Pastor Branson here. Yeah, I know who you are. Listen, I want you, I want you to accept another load from me. Is that okay? Absolutely. He says, I'll never get tired of your loads. I'll never get tired. In fact, I'm really happy that you came my way. So I dump it right here. And then I look up in his face and I say, I trust you to handle what I can't handle. And you know what? I've given you my mountain. Mountains. I'm giving them over to you. And I trust you. You know why? Because you are my heavenly father. You have never let me down. You're not going to ever let me down. In fact, you love me so much that you went to the cross and died on the cross for me. Folks, listen to pastor this morning. 
You and I have got to learn. We need to dump our issues and our mountains at his feet. And we need to trust him that he's able to take care of every single issue in our life. Why? He's an awesome God. He's an awesome God. He's a magnificent God. He's the one and only God. And he is our heavenly Father. That should blow your socks off. Who is your daddy? Woo! My goodness. Jesus is our Father. My goodness. So what are we looking at today? Something our Father can't handle. Jesus said, what we say in the other verse, what do you mean? Are you trying to tell me that I can't handle it? Don't you know who your daddy is? Some of us are acting like we don't know who our daddy is. Well, pastor, you just don't understand. No, you don't understand. Start strutting in his name. It's been the last time. When was the last time you danced around your mountain? I'm serious. I don't care. Do it at home when nobody can see you. Just put a little toy or something out there in the living room. And say, today, that's my mountain right there, and I believe in Jesus' name that that mountain's going down. And you know, I believe in it so much that I'm going to do a little victory dance. Whatever you want to do. You say, you have gone nuts. No, look, listen. I'm seriously. Go home and have a victory dance. Or if you want to do something better than that, I'll tell you something better than that. Get you a pair of boots like this. Boots. Put your little mountain down. And then say, you're going down. Ha! When was the last time you squashed one of your mountains in the name of Jesus? Well, you say, well, wait a minute, Pastor. Wait a minute. I better stop. I'm going to go to 12 o'clock this morning. Listen. Listen. Hold on. I'm going to give you something. Listen. Stay right there. Don't move. Stop. All right, marriage problems here. Problems with my children. Problems with alcohol. Problems with drugs. Problem with my career, problem with pride, problem with fear, problem with, you know, I'm in grief, need to do this. I've got problems here, problems here, problems with my job. I can't get a, I can't get a raise, whatever it is. That's a mountain right there. You pray over that mountain. You give that mountain over to Jesus. And you take your foot and you stomp it down in the name of Jesus. And you say, now listen now, hold on, this is the most important part. Wait a minute. I'm not free from that yet. I haven't seen that raise. I haven't seen that career bump. I haven't seen my marriage get right. My kids are still this way. I haven't had financial pro- my financial problems taken care of yet. Wait a minute, Pastor. Wait a minute. I can't squash it till it's done. No, you squash it before you start it. What's that called? Faith. Faith. That's the problem that we have. We believe sometimes that he can do it, but we don't celebrate it until he's done it. We need to celebrate it because here's why I'm saying this. Now listen, don't don't lose me here. Lord, God, he loves to reward our faith. Faith is the things that we haven't seen happen yet. But it's the things we know because it's his will that it's going to happen. Have you got that? So we give it to God, and in God's name, all this has been causing me trouble. You are going down because I've committed it to God. And you know what, God? Thank you for clearing me from this fear. God, thank you for making me not an alcoholic anymore. God, thank you for me not being a drug addict anymore. Thank you, God, for me being a godly parent. 
Thank you, God, for my wonderful marriage. Thank you, God, for my kids that are going right. Thank you, God, for my raise. Thank you, God, for my health. You see what I'm saying? You are believing in God for something that hasn't happened yet through your seeing it through your physical eyes. But I'll give you this. You start praying that way. I start praying that way. You better buckle your seatbelt because it will transform your life. Now, don't pray like that if you don't mean it. If you're going to lean on your own understanding or if you're shaking in your boots not knowing whether he's going to be able to do it or not, you're not ready for that prayer yet. you got to get yourself firm and planted and know who he is. A lot of us don't know who he is. Oh, pastor, he's my savior. Yeah, he's your savior, but he's not your victor because you're not walking in the victory. Am I being too complicated this morning? You've got to be firmly planted. Amen. Folks, because if you're not in 2023, the longer the Lord tarries, the harder it's going to be. It's not going to get any easier. If anybody tells you it's going to get easier, they're a liar. If anybody tells you this whole world's going to rebound, they're a liar. There's wars and rumors of wars. I was telling Brian this morning, and I'll stop with this, that I watched a documentary last night. It just blew my mind. I was laying in bed, and I was watching something. Something came up on my phone. It had to do with prophecy. And it was over in, the, in, over in the, uh, Damascus, over in, the, over in the Dead Sea. You can look this up. Over in the Dead Sea, they found that a part of the Dead Sea now is turning red. All these scientists, they cannot explain it. There's no reason for that to turn red. And it's not stopping, it's growing. And they don't get it. And over in Revelations, one of the things that happens during the tribulation is waters turn red. All sea life dies. Could it be that the Lord is starting that even now. For us to be able to look at it and say, well, golly, I better hurry up and find Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Or I better get my family and my friends to find Jesus. I'm not saying that's true. But I'm also saying that's not, I don't know if it is true or not. It could be. Folks, what I do know, though, is Jesus is coming back. Yes. Could be this afternoon. There's nothing stopping him. Putin's gone crazy. Chinese folks have gone crazy. Sand balloons up every which way. This world's gone nuts. Absolutely nuts. There's never been a time in the history of this United States and the world that it's been so precarious than it is now. I would not want to be a person today that doesn't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And people say this to me. They say, well, I believe you're wrong. I believe you're wrong. I believe that Jesus is not real. I believe he didn't go to the cross, down the cross. I believe you're wrong, Pastor. Fine. You're entitled to your opinion. But let me ask you this. What if I'm right and you're wrong? You know what I've lost? I've lost 45 years of helping people, encouraging people. I've had time in my life. 45 years, I ain't missed nothing. I ate every donut I wanted. I haven't lost anything. But you, on the other hand, you're going to lose everything. For all of eternity, you're going to be in a place called hell. You're never going to escape. If you don't know Jesus today, you're here, you're watching, you need to ask yourself this question. If you were standing before Jesus today, and if he was to look at you in, in your face and say, why should I let you come into my heaven? That's not a yes or no answer. That is, if you say, well, as somebody said to Brian the other day, well, I've done good. I've been good. I've done this. 
That's not the answer. The only answer that will get you into heaven is, I know in my heart that I believe that Jesus went to the cross. He died on the cross for my sins. I've asked him to come in to forgive me of my sins, and I have claimed him as my Lord and my Savior. Not head knowledge, heart knowledge. What would you say today if he asked you that question? If you're not sure this morning that you know Jesus, I'm going to ask you in just a moment to, mo to make one of the most courageous steps you've ever made in your life. And that is to walk down to where I'm going to be right here and just take me by the hand and say, Pastor, I am just not sure that I know Jesus. Somebody be happy to share with you this morning how you could know him. We're not going to embarrass you. We're not going to point at you. We're not going to make you say anything, I promise. We just want to make sure that you're heading to heaven. And if you're here as a Christian today, you've got mountains ahead of you. You've got mountains in front of you. It may be the same mountain you've been looking at for five years. I don't know what it is. But I want you in just a moment, when Drew starts playing, I want you to get out of your seats, and I want you to come down here, and I want you to fill this altar. And I want you to bring that mountain to the foot of the cross. And I want you to give it over to God. That may be kids. That may be finances. That may be marriages. That may be careers. I don't know what it is in your life. But I do know this. He doesn't want you to walk out of here with your mountain. He wants you to bring it to him this morning. Stand, please, as your head's about.